Hi everyone, hope you're all keeping well. Today I'm going to be doing a video about this product. It's made by ProLogic Astro and it's called the uh, ProLogic Balance Meter. So this uh, tool helps you get perfect balance with your mount. So good balance will always help you with good guiding. So if you've got a stiff mount, this will help aid you in getting really good balance because it's actually quite hard to know whether that mount is perfectly balanced or not. What it will also do is help you detect whether you've got any fine binding in your gears between your worm drive and your worm gears. Now if like me, you're someone who's done adjustments to the backlash or the worm carriers or done a full strip down and a rebuild and you've hypertuned your mount, this tool is really useful because very fine uh, binding can actually be uh, shown as like backlash on the graph if you do a guide assist in PHD2. So this little tool is very useful. Anyway, we'll do a video on it. We'll show you how it works and how I've used it. And then I'll give you a final overview of what I think. My name's Glenn, you're watching Astro Bloke. So one of the first things I'd like to say about the uh, unit is it's uh, all metal, it's nicely made, it's a nicely finished too, um, and the display is really big and very clear, which I'll show you in a second. So that's uh, really useful because obviously that's going to help you a lot when you're uh, trying to use this and control your mount at the same time, whether you're using the handset or, or EQ mod or something like that. So this one's for my EQ6R Pro and it's come with the GX12 connector with the two pins and the same in here. There are other variations of this so you, there'll be one for say like the HEQ5 and uh, other mounts. So um, when you order it you can get the right one for your mount. Let me plug it in for you and show you the display. So this is the power that would normally go into my mount so that would actually go straight into um, this unit and you can see it light up straight away lovely big clear display and it is important actually before you try and use this instrument that you have got a nice clean supply um, you don't want any numbers jumping around now you want this to be nice and stable and this end which is coming out of the unit goes straight into your mount then what you'll get is a reading of what ampage your mount is using when trying to slew. So let's go to the mount now and we'll have a look at how we use this as a balance meter and then we'll go on to how to use it to detect things like fine binding and what adjustments we can make to improve the performance of our mount. So first of all I'd like to demonstrate the uh, balance meter actually finding balance on uh, a mount. So um, I don't have a stiction with my mount because I did a hyper tune on it um, and everything's quite fluid. But I know that a lot of these mounts when they come out of the factory can be very stiff, which makes finding balance very difficult. Um, it, that can be caused by lots of heavy grease or things being done up too tight. And not everyone's comfortable uh, mechanically adjusting mounts, etc. So this is actually a good tool for that. So this will help you find balance even if you've got a bit of stiction. So what I've done is I've made this scope heavy. So it's dropping scope heavy side. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the readings of slewing. So I've got it on a rate of six on the handset. And I'm just going to press it now. Oh, I said I had it on a rate of six. That's a rate of nine. I'll change that. So rate six and we'll just go down and obviously it's not moving too far then so we've got four point point sorry point four nine three point four nine two it started at so that's good if we now slew the other way it should be a higher reading 
and there we can see we've got 4.9695 so we can see there that it's having to work a little bit harder going the other way so we know that by going this way it's working harder that this end is too heavy so we can now make an adjustment to that and what we're looking for is the ampage to be the same on both directions so I'm just gonna adjust the scope in the saddle and I know roughly where the balance is so I can show you that so that's quite nicely balanced there and obviously you can make a small adjustment and then just retest so if I go down now okay we're sitting at 4.93 4.92 and if we go the other way it's the same and that's going to tell you that you're pretty much balanced and that's going to help you in your guiding a lot so you can do that for both the deck and the RA and once you've got that those readings the same you know that you've got your mount balanced so that's a, a very simple way of getting your mount uh, balanced nice before a night of guiding the display on this is really clear to read and as I say if you use a slightly lower speed on the hand controller or you can do it in uh, your designated program like EQ mod whatever it is you're using to guide your scope or control your scope I find that a lower speed you get a bit more uh, stability in the numbers and you can just look at this end number make sure you're keeping everything nice and, and, and similar so don't worry if it fluctuates by a thousandth or two that's not going to be an issue and uh, it's going to get you balanced up which is going to help your guiding now what I wanted to move on to was uh, a big thing that I wanted to use this tool for as I say I don't have stitching in my mount because I've done um, a hyper tune on it so what I wanted to use this for was to help me get the best mesh between my worm drive and the worm gears in the mount now I'm going to give you a demonstration of uh, how to make adjustments and how we can use this tool to get everything to work really well now when you um, first make your adjustments it's very easy to you want to get rid of any play in the axis um, by moving the deck carriers but it's very easy to get the gears in too tight and what you can end up with is a binding that is actually audible it's actually the, the mount actually freezes and makes like a grinding noise and I've got a little um, example of that here that means the worm drive is too tight now if you've got that that's extreme binding that's no that's extreme binding between the gears that's no good whatsoever so you must make sure you immediately back everything off and uh, get it so it's not doing that now what you can do um, you obviously want to get backed off but you might feel a bit of play in in the mount and you what you want to do is move the gears in ever so slowly and what I found with this meter is if you move the gears in slowly until you start getting a fluctuation and I look at the hundreds and you get jumps in that or it starts off high and then comes back down a bit when you're slewing that's possibly very slight binding in the gears now that can show in guide assistant as backlash um, and I know that sounds rather strange but if you do the guide assistant you get the graph that shows you the going up and then the ideal coming back to the south and what you get is you get a horizontal line and then it comes down well that's actually not necessarily backlash that could be binding so what's happening is it's taking a while for the uh, sidereal rate to sort of get those gears moving and at first they're kind of frozen because there's a slight binding if you're tracking and you can hear any noise from the mount so like a light ticking noise that is also the gears slightly binding it's very hard to detect manually and when you make when I first made adjustments to my mount for my um, 
meshing between the gears, I had to kind of guess at it. And what this tool's done is taken that guesswork away. So if we can get this to get the gears in as close as possible and then the numbers stay nice and steady when we're slewing, then we know we're pretty well meshed. And I've been able to test everything and it works really well. So I've got some video of me doing some adjustments and using the tool. I'll jump to that now and you can have a look. So last night the uh, guiding went quite well after the initial adjustments. Um, I was getting about 0.7, uh, sometimes it would fluctuate a little bit, uh, but mostly the guiding was around 0.7, sometimes it dropped down to 0.6, sometimes it went up to about 0.8. So not too bad, I mean absolutely fine for the image scale I was at, but um, I want to see if I can now fine tweak this to get the adjustments just right to get the best guiding ever. Now one thing I want to really emphasise when you're making any adjustments on these mounts on Backlash, you must be patient and every adjustment must be minute. We are talking, you know, when we do a turn, we're talking just moving an Allen key a, mil a couple of millimetres, you know, not even a sixteenth of a turn and then retighten, retest. It does take time. You can't just put it in. It, it's so easy to get these too tight and then they'll bind. So what we're going to be looking at on the uh, meter here is we're going to be looking when we're slewing, we want to try and get the second decimal point to be steady. Um, we're not too worried about the th third decimal point the thousandths it's the hundredths so we want to try and get that steady so at the moment it is but what we're going to do is we're going to adjust in until and what I'm aiming to do here is adjust in until it's not steady and there's a little bit of movement on it and then at that point just back it off a little bit and hopefully that will be the way to find the sweet spot so that's what I'm going to do now and then uh, hopefully later it will be clear enough for me to test the results take a new pet curve and then we can make a comparison right let's uh, get some allen keys and make this adjustment now you can use the hand controller to move the mount slewing uh, while you're looking at the readings and what I would suggest is that you set a slightly lower speed than maximum maybe around uh, rate of six on um, EQ mod what I do is I go to um, number four, I'll see if I can show you here, uh, on the uh, slewing speed, you can actually set four, which is the fastest speed, and then there's a slider here, and it says 800, and if you lower that to about, it, it's not very uh, oh, accurate, for, oh, didn't want to grab it, right, let's try again, around, around the 600 mark, that's 636, let's see if I can do the same with this one, doesn't want to grab it. I don't know what I'm doing with my mouse. Here we go. That's uh, about the same. And then that gives you a nice steady slew rate that works well. Let me just unpart the mount there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slew the mount and I'm going to look at the RA and I'm going to look at that uh, second decimal point and see how it fares. So we'll have a look at that now. So there we go, we're at 8.3. That looks quite good, it's quite steady. And as you can see, I'm not getting a lot of movement on the other side either, so that's quite good. As you see, I'm not slowing fast. So 8.4, so a little bit tighter on that side of the gear. So what I've found is that if you get to the tighter points of the gear the ampage will go up a little bit but uh, we just watch this now 8.3 8.4 so we're pretty stable obviously the first thing I've done is make sure that the mount is balanced because obviously if it isn't balanced you're going to and you've got more weight one side than the other then the mounts going to work harder going one way than the other and you'll get a difference in the ampage so you do have to make sure your mount is perfectly balanced before trying this out okay so we're looking there oh, a little bit 8.5 there towards the end 8.4 that's pretty good so that's pretty stable 
So what I'm looking to do now is I'm going to undo the uh, carrier uh, nuts and what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this in a little bit. And what we're going to do is adjust this in until we start to get a little bit of a rise on that decimal reading, the second decimal point, and then what we're going to do is back it off a bit. So, what we're going to do. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention with these uh, worm carriers is people seem to tighten them up a ridiculous amount. And you do need to torque them up, but not to the point where you're distorting metal because it's easy to distort these and what I do is I undo them and just ever so slightly put a little bit of tension just a teeny bit of grip on them so that the the deck carrier isn't you know slopping around and everything so you don't want that and the biggest problem is when you redo these up that you don't do them up in a way that causes them to uh, twist or move about too much you want to try and do them up nice and evenly and I normally go one across the other side then then here and then you know and, and do it like that so we go across and trying to pull it on nice and square okay so that's the main carrier bolts released and what we've got to do now is we want to tighten the worm so to tighten the worm in we need to take a little bit we need to go a little bit anti-clockwise on this so we're going to go literally like that and we're going to do the same on the tightening the other side minute movements and now we've got to tighten it up now this might seem tedious, but to be honest with you, it's the way you've got to do it. Because if you do any big movements, you're just going to be in all sorts of problems. You're not going to know whether you're, you've done it right or you've, you know, it's really hard to judge. So very gently do that up. That's it. They're all nipped up nicely. So now it's retest. Eight point three. So we've not got any movement on the point two. Now, if anything, that's weird because we've actually moved the deck, the worm in a little bit tighter and it's actually holding more stable than it was when it was a little bit out. So that's a good sign. That's holding really nice. It's gone 8.4 there, oh, 8.7 there. Do you see that jump up slightly? Let's come back. 8.6, so it looks like there might be a little tight point on the uh, gears there. Yep, just goes from 8.4 to, oh, 9. So that would say to me that that's at that point where it's just starting to bind. So I need to back it off a little bit. Right then, so we're just going to very gently undo the bolts. If I can get the Allen key in, I'm having the usual problems I have trying to do this one-handed and hold a GoPro at the same time. So these should all be nipped up, but nothing over tightened. That's good. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we need to move the carrier away. So what we're going to do is this one needs to be undone a little bit and this one needs to be done up a bit. But what I've actually found when you get to those real fine points, you normally find that just doing the one up that pulls it away is all that you need to do. So, doing the one up at the bottom here pushes and pulls the carrier down. So what I'm actually gonna do is just, I'm literally gonna just tighten that one a, a little bit, and that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not actually gonna loosen the top one. And now what we've got to do is do the carrier up again. And lastly, this one, and that should be done up tight enough. We just want it so that it doesn't move. Okay. And now we're ready to test the movement again. 
So I'm looking at it that it jumped up quite a bit at one point, which we don't want. So that's gonna show that you're getting a bit of binding there. So, just gonna carry on slewing in that direction. We're back to 8.4, that looks good. So now we're gonna slew the other way and see what reading we get, here we go. So we're at 8.4. There was no jump there where we had that big spike to nine. 8.5, I'm worried about that, that's good. That looks nice, that looks quite stable. So yes, it's gone up a teeny bit to 8.53, 8.55. But I'm quite happy with those numbers. I think they're pretty stable. And if I feel the RA feels a lot more, it's like literally the play has gone out of it. So now what I want to do is look at the deck. So the deck is the next one. So we'll start with a South Slough. And it's sitting at 8.3 at the moment. Now when I did a backlash check on this mount last night it actually reported that there was hardly any backlash and it suggested that we use low pass 2 because it didn't detect any which is excellent so this actually could be okay it was just the RA for me that needed a little bit of a tweak yep the deck is moving very nicely there doesn't seem to be any spikes in that at all and there's just a teeny bit of play in it there. Absolute, the smallest amount. I can just feel it. Now, you've got to ask yourself if there's a little bit of play in that gear, but it's not showing backlash on the graph, is that something to try and tune out? Because what you uh, could possibly do is put it in that you get binding. Now, one of the big problems with the... Um, backlash graph that gets shown after using a guide assistant is quite often or not you'll get a straight horizontal line coming out and then it will follow it down and a lot of people and it'll be reported as backlash um, and what a lot of people then think is oh I'll tighten that in but it's actually not backlash it could be binding so what's actually happening is uh, when it's first trying to reverse itself it's actually caught a little bit and so those first few movements are trying to push through the binding that it's got and then it starts to come back so uh, be very careful with that adjustment because it's very easy to go the wrong way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the deck alone I've made adjustments to the RA I'll need to test them tonight and see if I can record a new pet curve and how much better that looks. And if I can get more of a nice smooth sine wave, I know I'm on the right track. But obviously the most important uh, number to look at, it will be my guiding numbers. Can be fluctuating a bit because of the seeing. Obviously if the seeing's not as good tonight as it was last night, then you know you might get a difference in a number there. But I reckon we'll be okay. Um, we're looking to get under that sort of 0.7. I know if I can get it to 0 0.6, 0 0.5, I'll be really, really happy. And I know this mount is capable of guiding at those uh, levels. So fingers crossed tonight, these clouds will um, go away and we'll be able to get some guiding done. Right, and I'll report back to you once I've done that. Okay, so I was able to get a screen capture and I've zoomed in here of my guiding that night and I'm extremely happy with the results. So I was getting guiding between uh, 0.3 and 0.5. Um, it was just uh, fluctuating between the two, but I think that will actually settle down as I use the mount. But I'm really pleased to see that the adjustments I've made have given me some nice guiding numbers. And I think the tool is great because it takes the guesswork out of uh, meshing those gears. Uh, and this, these results really do show that it works really well. Okay, so I know there's quite a lot of information there um, and I did quite a bit of work with the uh, meter and adjusting my mount, 
but I certainly got some really good results. I want to say a big thank you to uh, Andy Mitchell for uh, contacting me. Andy's the uh, man behind ProLogic uh, Astro, um, and he asked me to evaluate uh, his product. I think it's excellent. I think it's of uh, a, a really good build quality. So it's uh, really, really nice and sturdy. It's neat. It's very easy to read and use. Um, it's got some uh, quality leads with it as well with the silicon. Um, and it actually works really well. I mean, um, it takes away the guesswork. So even if you've got a mount restriction, it's gonna take away the guesswork with balancing. And if you're somebody that likes to adjust your mount with the deck carriers, or you wanna do a hyper tune or anything like that, it's gonna really help you tune your mount to you know the best it can be. Um, and it takes the guesswork out. You can actually visually see what you're doing and the nice thing is you can make these adjustments in the daytime obviously you do need clear skies and stars to actually test what you've done but I've actually found um, you know once I've done the adjustments um, if you get a nice steady amp ampage on your uh, mount and you've not got loads of play in the axis you've got it adjusted well and it's not jumping up and down you'll get good guiding. It seems to, you know, it seems to give you an accurate um, reading of what's going on within your mount. So that's brilliant. It's been a really good experience using the tool. And uh, to be honest, I wish I'd had it when I first did my Hypertune. I was, uh, I think I was a bit more lucky than anything to get the uh, guiding numbers I was getting initially um, because I kind of did it as a bit of guesswork. Um, and as I say, this kind of takes that out. So. Yes, check it out. I'm going to put a link in my uh, description below to the website for the product um, so you can have a look at it. And I know that he does ship worldwide. So if you're interested in something like this, it's a really, really good product and I highly recommend it. So uh, if you've got any questions, I really do not mind answering them. Please put them in the comments section and I will get back to you. Um, and I hope that you all have as much uh, success with your mounts that I have. So until next time, please take care and I'd like to wish you all clear skies.